Welcome to a new episode of Coptic Civilization. I'm Michael Saad. Logos TV welcome you as you watch us from time to time. And we are grateful you are one of our loyal viewers. Today's episode is on the Global Coptic Day. What a great thing, divine gift to me personally and to the Coptic world that a few people received the inspiration of creating a global Coptic day to be celebrated worldwide by all Copts and their friends and uh, lovers of Coptic orthodoxy and Coptic civilization and Coptic heritage. And we celebrated it on the feast of the entry of Christ into Egypt, celebrated on the 1st of June annually. Our guest today is the co-founder of the Global Coptic Day, Mr. Nader Anis Esquire, attorney in Florida and the deacon in the Coptic Orthodox Church. Welcome. Mr. Anis. Dr. Saad, it is a pleasure and a blessing to be with you tonight. Uh, the fact is, when you invited me to come on, uh, having watched your programs and been a fan of yours, uh, I jumped at the opportunity. So that's, that's the truth. And I, I thought that also we can, as you had said, actually be able to document in detail how Global Coptic Day started, what the objectives were, uh, and many other things I'm sure we will discuss, and this can help us and help many people in the future if they want to look back and, and see how things started. So it's indeed my pleasure and blessing. Thank you. Uh, thank you for accepting my invitation. And uh, I feel like I missed a lot but not by not knowing you, uh, for so many years, and uh, as if I discovered, not as if, I in fact discovered a treasure, uh, one of the role models of second generation Copts in America. Uh, and definitely, uh, if, you, if I may, take you as my role model for the rest of my life. No. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I'm, I'm humbled, but I, I guess I should let you speak the whole episode, <laughs> the entire episode. <laughs> But um, I don't deserve that, really. I, so, I, but thank you so much. I uh, appreciate I, it. I, it's from the, uh, my conscience and, and my heart uh, uh, on every word I said. And uh, we will jump into uh, the great event that happened a few days ago, Global Coptic Day, the 1st of June. Uh, and get a, an overview from His Grace, Bishop Yusuf, Bishop of the Coptic Orthodox Church in southern the United States, who is a co-founder, uh, you, you and him co-founded and were inspired and executed the inauguration of the Global Coptic Day. So let us watch His Grace Bishop Yusuf and Mr. Nader Anis in this four minute video. Number
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I am pleased to announce the establishment of Global Coptic Day, which will benefit the Coptic Orthodox Church all around the world. This day will take place on June 1st, in which we celebrate the entry of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Family to Egypt. And this day will be a celebration of our rich Coptic heritage and an opportunity to reach Copts and non-Copts all around the globe. We ask the Lord to bless this day with his goodness for the glory of his holy name through the intercession of Saint Mary, Mother of God, and all the saints. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Hi, my name is Ned Fouad Anis, and I wanted to thank His Grace Bishop Yusuf for that blessing, for blessing Global Coptic Day, because the fact is, without His Grace, none of this would have been possible. You know, when I first presented the idea to His Grace Bishop Yusuf on October 20th, 2018, Sayyidna was so enthusiastic and supportive of the idea that exactly one month later, on November 20th, 2018, I was in Egypt at St. Bishoy's Monastery presenting the idea to many of the bishops of the Holy Synod and even to His Holiness Pope Tawadros himself. None of that would have been possible without His Grace's involvement and blessing and enthusiasm. When I spoke to the bishops of the Synod, they liked the idea very much, thank God and they had some suggestions which we implemented. And also by the grace of God, when I spoke with His Holiness Pope Tawadros, he also liked the idea very much enthusiastically and said to me, which means it's, it's great, it's wonderful, keep doing what you're doing, it's a great idea. So we thank His Holiness and of course His Grace Bishop Yusuf and all the bishops of the Holy Synod that I spoke with that day. Now there are two quick things I want to mention uh, to help us promote Global Coptic Day. If you would, whenever you post about Global Coptic Day, please use the hashtag Global Coptic Day. So it's hashtag Global Coptic Day, all one word. The second thing is, if you don't have a Twitter account, please create one. Because the plan is, God willing, as we approach June 1st, 2019, which is the inaugural Global Coptic Day, the plan is to share links and photos and videos and things related to the Coptic Church and monasticism and our theology and our saints, our martyrs, so that, God willing, on June 1st or even before that, we can trend on Twitter. And that's a big deal. If we trend on Twitter, the whole world knows about it, and uh, the press knows about it, and they'll start inquiring about the, the Coptic Orthodox Church and the Copts and all the saints. And so it will, it will create wonderful momentum for us. And of course, please share this video and all the posts that we make regarding Global Coptic Day. That's really the best way for us to get the word out there. Okay, thank you so much for your attention and have a wonderful day. Beautiful. We thank you, uh, Mr. Nader Anis, and we thank, of course, His Grace Bishop Yusuf for taping the, the, the beautiful message that gives purpose and the goals and objectives of the Global Coptic Day. Mr. Anis, uh, you represent the second generation of Copts in America. And the Copts, when they came from Egypt, did not only come for professional uh, excellence and uh, opportunities, uh, but also they brought with them from Egypt treasures of Coptic civilization and treasures of Coptic spirituality. Uh, and among that early group in the 60s, your parents. And uh, you came along 
and uh, you grew up in uh, New Jersey and then made a journey to Florida where you serve the church and have a profession there. I am very curious to know as one example, as I mentioned earlier, a role model, how did your bringing up in New Jersey and your journey into Florida uh, for you and the family, uh, both within the church and in the professions. I'm very curious to learn the story. Okay. Well, I, I have to begin by saying that, that I had the two most incredible role models in my parents, uh, Fouad Anis and Mary Anis, or Mimi Anis. Uh, my father provided an incredible example of dedication and hard work and commitment to his job and profession but more importantly he always showed us that frankly that took a back seat to his service to the church and to christ so by the grace of god he was one of the founders of saint mark's church on west side avenue in jersey city he was considered also helping in founding the uh, St. George Church in Brooklyn. And he was the founder of St. Mina's Church in Homedale, New Jersey. That I even remember, and we, we have discussed this, I remember being with my father in the St. Bishoy Monastery, getting the blessing of His Holiness, Pope Shnuda III, to begin the project of the St. Mina Church. Yeah. And so this was very, very important and uh, was a great influence on my upbringing because frankly, that's, that's what I saw. I saw the service to the church and the importance <laughs> of doing that. And so regardless of where I went or what I studied, or whether I was living at home, or whether I was living in Florida, or wherever I was, this service and, and worship of God and commitment was embedded in, in my life, and in my psyche, and, and in my spirit. And so uh, my brothers and I grew up with this concept. And so in my life, in my professional life, and now with my two sons, who are teenagers, I always tell them stories about their grandfather, my father, and his service to the church, and I try to bring in much of what he did into their lives and use that as an example. Yes, in fact, uh, God bless his soul, your father, Mr. Fouad Anis, I heard about him uh, early on in the 70s when I came to America, and I know uh, the, the many churches he helped found, or he was the primary founder. And may God reward him in heaven, and he, may he pray on our behalf in the heavenly places. And I'm sure he would be, uh, his prayers uh, helped the success of the inaugural uh, Global Coptic Day. And... Uh, it, it just, the Global Coptic Day is, 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 is a whole lot to put my arms around it. It, it it's a great thing. It, 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 relates, it relates to Coptic identity, it relates to Coptic civilization, it relates to Coptic celebration of the entry of Christ to Egypt and living there. And we may boast in the Lord that he blessed our country, Egypt, and probably, most probably, played with the kids of his age in the villages of Egypt and picked a few Coptic words that were spoken at the time, same language we, we speak today in Coptic. And uh, so it's a great blessing. But uh, not only 
we should boast in the Lord as Egyptians, but I was delighted when you uh, talked with me that Bishop Yusuf saw in this global Coptic day a celebration for the whole world because Egypt represented the Gentiles. And the prophecies of Isaiah 19, blessed my people Egypt, and, and so on. Shall we play uh, video number one, where His Grace Bishop Yusuf explains that concept of Egypt, but all the world is rejoicing for the gates of heaven is now open to the Gentiles. Let us watch video number one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. This Saturday, we will celebrate the feast of the entry of our Lord Jesus Christ to Egypt. And on this occasion, His Grace Bishop Basil, His Grace Bishop Gregory, and myself, would like to wish you all a very blessed and happy feast. And the entry of our Lord Jesus Christ to Egypt has actually a symbolic meaning. In the Old Testament, the only nation that was called my people by God is Israel. No other nation, God called them my people. And the only nation that was called beloved was Israel. No other nation was called beloved. But in Hosea, we read that in the new covenant, after the incarnation of the Son of God, the nations that were not called by God my people, they will be called my people. And the nations that were not called by God beloved, will be called beloved. So when the Lord Jesus Christ went to Egypt, escaping from Herod, this has a symbolic meaning, that the Lord Jesus Christ did not come to one nation only, but he came to the whole world. And Egypt was a Gentile country, country of the Gentiles. So. Egypt actually in the Old Testament was not called my people but when the Lord entered to Egypt and the Egyptians accepted the Christian faith and Egypt is a symbolic of the rest of the whole world so now the whole world became the people of God and became the beloved of God in Isaiah chapter 9, uh, 19 uh, we read, blessed my people Egypt. So this was a prophecy that Egypt and all the Gentiles who will accept the faith will be the people of God, my people called by God. That's why we thought that this feast, the entry to Egypt, is not a national feast. It's not a feast pertaining only to the Coptic uh, Christian. But this feast actually is a global feast. All the countries in the world should actually celebrate this feast because on this day we remember how the Lord Jesus Christ came to the whole world and called the whole world to salvation. Uh, and from this actually the idea of the global Coptic day came. To consider this day actually is a day in which we remember that our Lord Jesus Christ came and reconciled the one nation Israel to the rest of the whole world. He came to everybody. So whoever uh, call on God and accept Him will be saved. Not only those who are born of flesh and blood, descendant of Abraham by flesh, but all the people who are descendant by Abraham, of Abraham by faith, they have the faith of Abraham, this will be called my people. So we started to celebrate June 1st to be 
not only a feast for the Coptic Orthodox Christian, but actually to be a global Coptic day in which also we, we remember the contributions of the Coptic Church on the whole world. Indeed, indeed. Mr. Anis, how does these words resonate in your heart? I'm sure you are overwhelmed. It's beautiful words, really. Um, you know, when we think about the entry of our Lord Jesus Christ into Egypt, we have to put things into perspective. This was the Savior of the world. This was God. This was the most important person ever. And so when we think about the fact that he was in Egypt for over three and a half years, that's not, that's not days or, or weeks or months, three and a half years he was living in Egypt. We have to be in awe and putting things in perspective. Like, for example, the President of the United States now is in Great Britain for a few days. And the news is covering it 24-7. Everything he's doing. And he's visiting the Queen, and he, they're having uh, important dinners and meetings. It is wall-to-wall -wall coverage because a president is going somewhere to visit. Well, we had the Lord of Lords himself, Jesus Christ, in our homeland for three and a half years. This is such a source of pride that we have to proclaim it to the whole world. And we want them to share in our joy. We want them to share and to understand that salvation is, is for everyone. Everyone is now my people, as is said in Isaiah. And so it is such an important event and it's such an important happening that our Coptic Orthodox Church has established the entry of our Lord Jesus Christ as one of the seven minor feasts. And we give it such uh, reverence and importance because this is for us cops, of course, such a, a something, something that we are extremely proud of, but it's something that we want to share with other people. And this is actually sort of the backstory for Global Coptic Day. That we, we have something that's, as you, you had used the word treasure before, Dr. South. It is a treasure of treasures that the Lord is in. Egypt. And so when you have good news or, or you have something great, it's very hard to keep it to yourself. You want to share it with people. And so the tie-in between Global Coptic Day and the entry of our Lord Jesus Christ into Egypt and the, the flight of the Holy Family, they're connected because there is now, the whole world is my people, uh, based because of the entry into Egypt. They can all be God's people. But it is also an opportunity to tell people about the Coptic Orthodox Church. And, and so the fact is, Sayyidina, his, uh, his Grace, Bishop Yusuf is the one who actually chose the date. He wanted it to be June 1st, a global Coptic day. He wanted it to coincide with the entry of our Lord Jesus Christ into Egypt. And so uh, he said, we will make it on June 1st. We actually, and I, I can even give you some backdrop that I, I haven't even shared this with anyone else. I had suggested or brought up, I said, maybe the feast of St. Mark as being the founder of our church. I mean, some people would say, that's a possibility since it's Global Coptic Day. And I have suggested uh, one or two other dates. And His Grace right away said, no, it should be June 1st, the feast day. Uh, His Grace also 
is the one who called it global. We had discussed different names. We had discussed how to uh, how to frame it, how to you know how to call it, and uh, is it regional? Is it national? Is it? And again, Abbe Yusuf, His Grace, Abbe Yusuf said, no, let's call it global, because number one, this is salvation for the entire world, and this is the entire world. They can call themselves. Uh, the children of God, and they are God's people. But also, when we call it global, and it, it invites everyone to celebrate with us. Because, and he had this vision, he said, this is going to be something big, and big for everyone, everywhere. So, and this is not uncommon at all for His Grace Bishop Yusuf. The truth is, I, I've had many experiences with him where he had vision, frankly, that no one else has. He has, he's a visionary in many things, and he can see how big things can be. And so this was his idea to call it global and his idea to make it June 1st. If I may uh, resonate with what you said, uh, Egypt at that time, was the cultural center of the world. The center of learning of the world was in Alexandria, Egypt. And uh, of course, the total land of Egypt were, were, was in the highest level of learning. And of course, people who built the pyramids, invented philosophy and art and music and, and, and. This is the people that were on the receiving end when Christ and St. Mary and St. Joseph uh, landed in, in, in the country of Egypt. But Egypt, as his grace, Bishop Yusuf said, was a representative of the Gentiles, of the rest of the world. So, and being the cultural center of the world, Christ came to Christianize. Egypt and the world and say here I am I'm coming as a vulnerable child to embrace to to em to be embraced by you in a new faith in me in my salvation in my redemption that yet to come and indeed St. Mark's feast would be more national but the feast of the entry of Christ to Egypt. Actually, the Catholic Church has a day for it also, and on their calendar. Uh, they celebrate the entry of Jesus uh, to Egypt. And uh, so it's a global day by definition. And we can rightfully and joyfully sing and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Or in another translation, we will rejoice and be glad in it. And as the entire Christian world celebrates the entry of Christ to Egypt, we share in prayers, in joy, and also in grief, whenever grief is necessary. For example, when persecution and the martyrdom happens somewhere because of Satan's and, and, and his powers, envy the children of God and cause death to them on earth, true, we rejoice for their glorification in heaven, but we also grieve with, with their families and, and our hearts are are wounded. Uh, so the entire race of humanity grieves together. So the day of the feast of the entry of Christ to Egypt is, is all encompassing human uh, reflection, human attitude, human heart pulsing with joy and, and grief whenever the need might be 
but at all times this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it yes the the, the if I may please the second component of global Coptic day yes please the word global and the word Coptic it is relates to what the Coptic Orthodox Church has contributed to the world yes and so it is both global because it has uh, touched so many people all around the world and I'll, I'll give some examples and it's Coptic because it is uh, the Copts who have given the world these gifts and these treasures. For example, and the most obvious is monasticism. Yes. The first monk was Saint Anthony, who was born in a village called Kumdalarus in Egypt. And so every monk who wears the garb, and I'm not just talking, I'm not just talking Coptic monks, I'm talking any monk. They are indebted to the to Saint Anthony the Great, the, the the young man who started out a, and and entered the church and heard the the gospel reading that said, "If you want to be perfect, go sell all that you have and come follow me." And he, he did that very day. And so we look at Global Coptic Day as also contributions by Copts and the Coptic Church. So monasticism or martyrdom. I mean, our church is considered the most persecuted church in the world with a history of martyrdom to the point of being called the Church of Martyrs. So we have given martyrdom to the world and led by example and continue to do so we have given monasticism to the world we have given theology as you alluded to earlier the school the theological school of alexandria was the epicenter of theological thought and study and theologians and frankly, anyone who recites the creed can thank Saint Athanasius because he wrote the creed. Anyone who recites the creed, a Coptic Orthodox Pope, but at the time he wasn't even a Pope when it was written. So there is theology, there is monasticism, there is we said uh, the persecution and martyrdom. And there are other things like Coptic hymnology where you can research this. There are scholars from Europe and other places who study Coptic hymnology. And we have given the world a gift through our hymnology, even being so distinctive that some of our hymns are derived from Pharaonic chants, like Gulhutha. The origin of this is an ancient Pharaonic chant. It's a burial chant. And so what, what the Coptic Church gives to the world, frankly, cannot be summarized in in a 90-minute program it cannot be summarized in a day of celebration it must be something that we remind the entire world every day of the importance and significance that chances are if it's related to some spiritual uh element some prayer some worship it has to do at some point with Coptic Orthodox. Absolutely. Uh, music to my ears. And uh, that's why Dr. Gaudat Gabra and myself brainstormed and uh,
created this program Coptic Civilization in both Arabic and English versions uh, since uh, 2013 and uh, we have now about 59 episodes in Arabic and this episode today is number 53 in English and the viewer can go to YouTube and search Al Hadar Al Qibtiya in, in Arabic you get the Arabic uh, episodes or Coptic civilization and get the uh, episodes in English uh, and uh, also uh, we broadcast now live on Facebook as you may go now to Facebook and for Logos Space TV and uh, watch us uh, above and beyond satellite uh, broadcast and internet broadcast uh, and YouTube broadcast. So there are hundreds of thousands of people around the world watching Logos TV and we invite the viewer to donate to Logos TV to make this message of Coptic heritage and Coptic spirituality and liturgies and sermons and biblical studies and medical uh, advices and, and, and programs and, and, and uh, day life, day to day uh, problem solving. All of these programs are on Logos TV and if you call the number on the screen uh, there will be somebody to answer your call and uh, can we put the number on the screen uh, uh, and uh, get your uh, donate using visa card or, or a check and actually uh, you can also go to www.logoschannel.com and donate on uh, online uh, Mr. Anis, you mentioned that one of the objectives of Global Coptic Day is uh, celebrating our heritage, both spiritual and, uh, and secular. And, uh, it, 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 but of course, the Coptic Church, given the political uh, history of Egypt, uh, the Coptic Church, by definition, became the custodian of a good part of, or the majority of aspects of Coptic civilization, like music, like art, it became sacred music, it became sacred art that survived the centuries. Uh, and, and other things like architecture, like uh, monasticism, of course, by definition, uh, was s surviving within the Coptic church. So I want to the viewer to present to the viewer uh, this book, Coptic Civilization, which again, uh, it's edited by Dr. Gaudat Gabra, who was a co-founder of this program, Coptic Civilization on Logos TV. And uh, in this book, there is 21 chapters, uh, chapter for each of Coptic language, Coptic literature, Coptic art, uh, art history and contemporary Coptic art, Coptic music, Coptic monasticism, Coptic theology, Coptic architecture, Coptic textile, Coptic uh, metalwork, and Coptic civilization in the diaspora uh, that I have the honor and uh, privilege to, to write that chapter myself. So I encourage you to go to Amazon.com and buy the book and make it a gift for graduation or for uh, any other occasion, Christmas, uh, wedding, etc. It, 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 it has colorful pictures of, of beauty and, uh, and, uh, and so on. And uh, it's also available on Google Books if you want to read it for free on the internet. Uh, also equally good uh, is this book, uh, The Coptic Christian Heritage, History, Faith and Culture by Louis Farag, editor and uh, it has also about 20 chapters written uh, by scholars from uh, around the world uh, and for the history part uh, i had the honor of writing chapter six uh, about the history of the last uh, 60 years of the copts and the coptic church and also you can find it on amazon.com uh, 
very, very uh, good book uh, this describing the Coptic heritage, uh, which we are celebrating on the feast of Christ's entry to Egypt and the feast of uh, uh, Global Coptic Day. Uh, if I may, uh, we watch video number eight will give us a documentary about four minutes of the purposes and objectives and uh, some of the details of how a concept was conceived and how after conception the concept became reality to celebrate. Let us watch video number eight. Global Coptic Day. Their voice has gone out into all the earth and their words to the end of the world. Psalm 19.4 What is Global Coptic Day? A day that unites the world's Coptic Orthodox population to celebrate its rich heritage. What's the goal? To share Coptic Orthodoxy with the world and create awareness of who we are, what we believe, and the Church's important contributions. How did the idea for Global Coptic Day arise? A combination of two things. In August 2018, His Holiness Pope Tawadros made comments lamenting the waste of time that results from the ongoing use of social media. Two, His Eminence Metropolitan Serapian's words at the Southern U.S. Diocese Silver Jubilee Gala on October 7, 2018. The cops don't have a strong presence in the media or the culture. So the question became, how can we use social media in a beneficial way that glorifies God and also gives the Copts a strong presence in the media and culture? Introducing Global Coptic Day. Through the prayers, vision, and guidance of His Grace Bishop Yusuf, Global Coptic Day became a reality. Also, His Holiness Pope Tawadros II blessed the idea for Global Coptic Day. Why choose June 1st annually? His Grace Bishop Yusuf selected June 1st because it is the feast day of the entry of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Family into Egypt. Benefits of Global Coptic Day 1. It will unify Copts in one global celebration. 2. It will use social media for something beneficial. 3. It will create awareness and generate media coverage for the Church. 4. It will introduce non-Copts to our churches. Five. It will encourage people to research the Coptic Orthodox Church and its precepts. Proposed activities on Global Coptic Day. Praise. P. Prayers for the peace of the Church all day. R. Read to little children. Start a reading tradition. A. Acts of mercy. Aid the poor, sick, hungry, jailed. I. Invite non-Copts to attend a church service. S. Serve local communities and neighbors. E. Educate the world audience on our rich history and faith using social media. Using social media, we have a tremendous opportunity to share Coptic Orthodoxy with the world. What is each diocese asked to do? 1. Have their members and clergy shoot short videos, less than one minute each, and take photos and post them on social media using hashtag Global Coptic Day, hashtag June 1. 2. All Copts are asked to wear dark red slash red on June 1st to symbolize the blood through which our glorious Coptic Orthodox Church has been nourished for many centuries. 3. Have each parish shoot videos and take photos of the priests and all congregations standing together and saying in unison, Happy Global Coptic Day from name of parish, city state, or city country. 4. Make hashtag Global Coptic Day hashtag June 1 announcements in the churches, on social media, in the newsletters, etc. Also, please like and share all of our posts. Questions? Comments? Contact Nader Anis, nader at globalcopticday.org. If you'd like to be a Global Coptic Day ambassador for your diocese or parish, please send an email to nader at globalcopticday.org. Any comments, uh, Mr. Anis? Um, there are a lot of comments, but I'll, I'll try to limit it. What, what struck me listening to this and watching it now, uh, because I haven't watched it since Global Coptic Day, what struck me was by the grace of God, 
how many targets and we actually hit in the objectives. We had certain objectives that we were hoping to achieve, and thank God we, we hit one after the other, not, not the least of which is all the media coverage. And we wanted to create interest, we wanted to create curiosity, and we wanted people to say, what is this Coptic thing all about? Let me look it up. Let me research it. Let me ask. Let me email someone. Um, and between the emails and the texts and the private messages and um, all, the, all the phone calls, there are people essentially from all over the world who have inquired about the Coptic Church, and they want links, and, and they've asked about, well, can, where can I find more information? So that objective was wonderful. The objective of the media, thank God, we got tremendous media. Uh, media coverage from the American media, media coverage from the Egyptian media, both in English and Arabic. Uh, so it was, really, it hit all the objectives that we wanted to achieve and so, thank God, and really, the remarks and uh, the emails and the contacts and all these messages that I'm getting are people, you don't know how many emails and messages I get that are three or four words, and th those words are proud to be Coptic, proud to be Coptic Orthodox, so proud to be Coptic. I mean, one after the other after the other. So, thank God. Thank God he, uh, and, and again, I, I want to say this, too. From day one, this project has been very clearly guided uh, by the Lord. And it is very obvious that God's hand is, is in it from, from day one and continues to make this grow. This is not through uh, anyone's effort, frankly. This is God, God's plan. God wants this to happen, and uh, I think we'll discuss in a little bit, uh, and I, or we could do it now if you like, about how uh, meeting with Pope Tawadros was, frankly, the right place at the right time, but it was God, uh, I think, arranging it so that I was there for the time when he came out of his office in the monastery, and I was able to speak with him for about uh, for about 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm and curious. About the global Coptic day. So, yeah, I'm curious. Please go ahead and tell us the story. Oh, you want to hear the story? Yes, please. Yes, I'm very curious. Okay, so when I went to Egypt, um, and this was November 20th, 2018, uh, I went to Egypt to present the idea to the bishops of the Holy Synod uh, of the diaspora, and it wasn't all of them, but it was a, a large number of them, and I spent an hour with them, we were sort of in a circle uh, arrangement, seating arrangement, and I had some slides, although we didn't have a PowerPoint, but I, I had the actual slides and I gave them handouts, and so it was an hour presentation, and by the and they had they had questions and they were um, they were very interested to to know different angles and and uh, want to, wanted to know more. At the end of it, they were all very pleased and very happy. Uh, and thank God I got their blessing as well. And I was about to leave, and then Emba Peter, Bishop Peter said, "Why don't you wait for me?" in the Lojos area. They also have a, uh, what they call Lojos uh, building. And uh, we can leave the monastery together. Frankly, we hadn't planned it, and I didn't ask him. He just said to me, why don't you wait for me? And so I said, sure, he said. So I sat and I waited. Uh, about half an hour went by, and all of a sudden, His Holiness Pope Tawadros came out of his office and started walking toward me. Now, he wasn't coming to speak with me, but he was, he was about to pass right by me. So I thought, no better time than the present. 
to speak with him about it. I, I got right up. I stood right up, and I, I began to speak with him. We had met previously in the uh, Southern United States 25th anniversary, their gala. And so he remembered who I was, but he certainly wasn't going to stop if I hadn't stopped and if I hadn't been at that place at that time because of Amba Peter. So I spoke about it. Uh, Global Coptic Dan, as you heard in the video, he blessed it. He liked the idea very much. And that's really when I, I would say the day he was born. If we may uh, put the picture of you and uh, His Grace Bishop Yusuf with His Holiness Pope Tawadros on the screen, uh, when was that picture and what were you doing? That, that picture was actually November 25th. So that was five days after um, speaking with His Holiness and presenting the idea to the bishops. And so what happened was while Actually, before I went to Egypt, and again, when I say God's hand was in it the whole time, I'm not exaggerating. Before I left Egypt, I would say maybe uh, a week before, uh, I was researching some iconographers in Egypt, because I knew I was going to be in Egypt, because I wanted an iconographer to create an icon of the Holy Family fleeing to Egypt. And so, while I was doing that, I found the work, a uh, beautiful, beautiful work of Osama Maurice in Egypt. And uh, I, I think he's very worthy of a plug here to say, if you're looking for any type of iconography or uh, you're building a church, you're looking for someone to create your icons, he is someone who is of the highest caliber. We can so show your picture I, with Osama Uh, uh, the artist Maurice. Osama Maurice, and uh, we can show the picture now on the screen. And he's on uh, he's on Facebook as well, and he has some of his examples on there, which are absolutely beautiful. But I contacted Osama, and I told him what was happening. I didn't give him too much detail about what I was hoping to do, which was presented to His Holiness Pope Tawadros. I hadn't really told him much about that because, frankly, I didn't want to get his hopes up uh, or get my hopes up more than they were already up. But I told him I wanted the icon, and he has a beautiful method of uh, gilding the gold. You probably can't see it in that icon, but what he does is he... He hammers tiny little holes, and he makes a, a design with the gold in the background, which is unusual. You don't really see that in many icons. And so what he did in the icon of the Holy Family, he used, it, he used that technique to make the halos. Uh, like I said, you can't really see it very well. And so I saw his technique, and I said, He's, I want him to be the one to create the icon. Again, not even knowing if the bishops would like the idea, not even knowing if His Holiness would like the idea, or if I would even be able to speak with him. All of this was on faith. All of this was based on how I saw God's hand from when I thought about the idea and presented it to His Grace and Yusuf. I saw God's hand in that process, and I said to myself, God will find a way to make this happen. And so this was before my trip, and I spoke with him, and I said, I know it's short notice. I'll need it in about a week. And silence. <laughs> no, he was actually, all joking aside, he said, inshallah, we'll make it happen. He said, normally this takes a, a long time, but inshallah, we'll make it happen. So... Uh, so that's what happened, and so we, I finally picked up the icon from Osama when I was in Egypt, and I told him at that point, I said, by the way, there's a chance that His Holiness might get this. And of course, he was excited about that, uh, but I didn't know if it was really going to happen. I had no idea. And so on the 25th of November, in the Cathedral of St. Mark in La Basilla, 
This is when the ordinations of the bishops were. This was Amba Basil and Amba Gregory of the Southern U.S. Diocese, plus other bishops were being ordained. And I was there. And I had the icon with me. And I had told His Grace Amba Yusuf, and again, I, I, I have not discussed this or told this story really to anyone before. And I said to say in the Amba Yusuf, I said, I would love for us to present this icon. This is the, we'll call it the official icon of Global Coptic Day. I would love if we can find a way to present it to His Holiness so that He has it. And he said, uh, God willing, it will happen. And so, and I thought throughout the liturgy, maybe during the readings, it was possible and it wasn't possible. Uh, he was busy and then he came out and, and so I couldn't talk to him. I thought maybe at the end after communion, well, he was also kind of busy. But uh, about 20 minutes after communion, after everyone was, was sort of filing out, and Bay Yusuf says to me, come quickly, His Holiness is on the throne right now, let's go. And so I didn't even have the icon with me. I didn't expect that it. it was in one of the rooms on the side there. So I ran, I got the icon, and Yusuf told me, come on. So I went with him, and he said to, to His Holiness, uh, here's the icon for, you know, that project. You heard about the project, Global Coptic Day, and we'd like to present it to you. And that's what happened. He, uh, Yusuf was on one side, I was on the other. Uh, His Holiness's photographer was right there, and you saw we presented it to him. His Holiness had the cross up, and um, they took the picture, and that's the history of the picture and presenting the icon to His Holiness. Again, God showing His hand, His involvement, uh, one step after the other, just all these different things happening, it, it was really remarkable. Wow, this brings us to the White House. Uh, one of the objectives of Global Coptic Day is to tell the world about Coptic heritage and that right. the Copts contributed to world civilization and that the Copts contributed to world Christianity. And, 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 in, in several aspects. And in fact, the book I, I showed you, Coptic Civilization, uh, attests to that. I mean, there is no museum on earth, a big size, reasonable size museum, that does not have Coptic textile. Right. Uh, and, 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 there is no book from the first centuries in anywhere in the world not made in Egypt. If you go to any museum on earth and look for books, manuscripts that was, were produced in the first few centuries of Christianity, they are all made in Egypt, whether they are in the Greek language or the Coptic language. It, it, there, we can talk about this forever and including our program, Coptic Civilization. We, ha we talk about this every episode. So now the White House uh, responded to the Global Coptic Day idea, invitation, and of course the White House does this with all, all varieties of groups of Americans uh, with different ethnic backgrounds, different religious backgrounds. The White House holds uh, Ramadan uh, breakfast, uh, it holds uh, uh, Greek uh, National Greek Day, it holds uh, uh, Ch Chinese American Day, and, and so on. Uh, Black History Month. So the White House responds to and encourages all of these ethnic groups and religious faith-based groups to celebrate their culture, celebrate their heritage, celebrate their faith. Now, uh, we we, we, I was surprised to find the White House uh, message on uh, the screen, now we see it, and uh, uh, 
if I may read it and uh, ask your comments, Mr. Anis, about it and how it came to happen. Sure. Uh, I, I would love to read it. I send my warmest greetings to the Coptic Orthodox community as they celebrate the inaugural Global Coptic Day. For centuries, the Coptic Orthodox Church has been an integral part of the faith community. As January, June 1st, 2019 marks the first Global Coptic Day, it is my hope that today, it's signed on the 1st of June, by the way, that today, provides a renewed sense of purpose for the millions of Coptic Christians in the Middle East and around the world. Earlier this year, the Cathedral of the Nativity in Cairo, the largest church in the Middle East, opened its doors to those seeking God's love and mercy. As we commemorate this important milestone for members of the Coptic Orthodox Church, we also honor those who have been lost due to religious persecution and violence. My administration will always defend religious liberties and work to ensure that people of all faiths are free to live and worship according to their conscience and beliefs. Melania joins me in wishing all Coptic Orthodox Christians a momentous celebration filled with joy. May God bless you. Donald J. Trump signature. Your comments and how this came to happen, Mr. Anis. Okay, well, first of all, I think if, if the Copts were to write it themselves, I don't think we would have added much more to that. Um, the wording and hitting all the different points that matter to us, whether it's that we've been an uh, integral part of faith and we've been around for centuries, and uh, about our martyrs and celebrating the day with us. I mean, all of these, he, he hit so many of the, the different important parts to us that it was, it was so exciting to see this. Now, it's dated June 1st. He actually signed it before he left on his trip to Asia. <clears throat> and so that's, that's what the White House, the, uh, the office of the messages, the presidential messages, we found that out. So he signed it before he left because we had made the request. And, and so looking at this type of message, it's really something that we are all very proud to receive because we feel like finally we're getting recognized and frankly it's not we're just recognized because there was a violent incident in egypt or or somewhere else that people were killed no we're being recognized because we have a day of celebration and it's uniting the entire coptic world and he even mentions i mean he doesn't even direct it to u.s cops i mean it's very clear that it's it's done on purpose for all the cops all around the world to unite them and so what happened was we applied for this type of letter for this recognition and there's there's a believe me a very detailed process um and an application and we have to provide documentation and we have to give them information and exhibits I mean, you, you think that, oh, it's just, you know, some message that's written up and it's not a problem or it's done easily. It's not. But thank God, uh, and I have to mention, really, uh, the go-between, the liaison uh, and the person that really helped this take place and, and happen uh, was uh, George Suriel who is an attorney, who's a, a friend of mine. I've known, known him for about 40 years. And uh, he is, has worked very closely with the Trump Organization and is very, uh, very involved and, and able to present these types of things and, uh, and help us out a lot. And he did, and frankly, he worked 
very, very hard on it. So I have to give credit where credit is due. And um, on the day of release, we both received the email. It was uh, as a PDF. And we, you know, we were in different places. Obviously, we weren't together. But he, he saw it first, and he called me, and I was out with my son. And as soon as he told me, I, I pulled it up off of the phone, and I saw it. And I showed it to my son, and he was excited. And uh, I will break some news on your show tonight. Is that okay? Oh, I love good news that are surprises. I, I knew you would. I am getting the original. And so, <laughs> yeah, you didn't know that. I know you didn't know that. Yeah, that's, well, uh, it's legitimate. You are the co-founder, so. <laughs> well, no, but I'm, I'm saying it in terms of so that I can share it with everyone because, right. again, it's, it's exciting for all of us. Listen. I'm saying listen. that only because <laughs> I, I want people to know that and, and, um, and once uh, and, and they'll be able to, in, you know, share in the excitement knowing that it's not just a PDF, but an actual document. Okay, let me tell you your next big project. <laughs> you, you're, you've, you already have it planned out for me? Yeah. Put, <laughs> build a museum and put that letter in the entrance of the museum. So you have a big project to do in front of you. Uh, and I will supply the rest of the museum. Oh, uh, well, that, that, that's, that makes it a lot easier, certainly. Okay, if, if uh, the, rest of the, of else. the rest of the artifacts, we put manuscripts, we put uh, lots of other things uh, that I can uh, uh, mediate. So that, that's fantastic. If I may ask your permission, because I love in this program, uh, we did several episodes before about laity who established or, or consumed so much energy and love to establish the Coptic Church in America. And uh, your father and, and mother uh, were members of, of who, who consumed so much energy and, and helped establish several churches. But uh, George Surreal's parents also did the same. Uh, and they were part of that group in New Jersey, Jersey City, who established the first center, uh, uh, considered the, they are competing with Los Angeles, who was first. Uh, <laughs> uh, they are counting the days whether Santa Mark uh, in Los Angeles was first or Santa Mark in Jersey City was first. Uh, but Jersey City uh, uh, signed the escrow of the purchase of the church first, before Los Angeles, anyways. And uh, they were praying earlier, like with Father Rafael Nakhla for a few years, and Father Mina Kamel uh, before Los Angeles. But anyway, uh, Dr. Adel Suriel and his wife, parents of Mr. George Suriel, were one of the founders of several churches in the Jersey, New York area, but especially the Papal Archdiocese building. They are one of few people who really bought that building, not only that, but they cleaned it themselves because it was not ready for Pop Shenouda to arrive and enter it. They observed and watched and even used their hands to clean that building for Pop Shenouda to arrive. So we often or almost always forget the role of laity in establishing the Coptic Church in America. But I wanted to use, to piggyback on George's uh, effort to get that recognition from the President of the United States, and God made it successful to mention and honor his parents. God uh, give them good life and good health. I wanted also to say that uh, Gosh, I forgot. Let us continue. Uh, uh, yes, Bishop Youssef uh, put a thank you video for the president on YouTube. And uh, 
I wanted to play that uh, video, which is number three. Now uh, we watch His Grace Bishop Yusuf. After the idea of Global Coptic Day, start to establish, and uh, uh, we, we thought about it uh, in a very deep way, how to make this day a global day, not only celebrated uh, by the Coptic Orthodox Christian, but by the whole world. So after prayer, we thought to contact the White House and to ask Mr. President to uh, write a statement about the inauguration of the Global Coptic Day. And uh, through the grace of God, uh, pres uh, Mr. President actually agreed to write this statement. And actually he wrote a very, very uh, nice statement. In this statement, actually, he congratulated the Coptic Orthodox Christian in the whole world by the inauguration of the Global Coptic Day. Also, he made a reference to the new cathedral that was opened in the Feast of Nativity uh, this year, January 7th, uh, 2019. And also he made a reference to uh, the martyrs that shed their blood uh, for the name of Christ. Uh, not only that, but in his letter uh, and statement, he expressed the determination of his administration and the government how to fight for the uh, religious uh, freedom uh, in the whole world and how everybody should have the opportunity to, to worship according to his faith and according to his conscience. And uh, on this actual occasion, I like to uh, show and present my gratitude and my thanksgiving to uh, Mr. President Donald Trump and also to the First Lady uh, Melania who shared Mr. Trump in, in the letter and congratulating all the Coptic Orthodox Christian with the inauguration of the Global uh, Coptic Day. And above all, actually, we, we thank God who inspired us with this idea. And we want this day, actually, day to be remembered, not only this year, but every year. Uh, and we remember, actually, uh, the Coptic uh, contribution to the whole world, as well as the entry of our Lord Jesus Christ to our uh, uh, land, uh, Egypt. Uh, so, Sayyidna, uh, would you uh, conclude uh, this presentation with a small wish for uh, and prayer for uh, the, the success of the Global Coptic Day and for the uh, Coptic Orthodox Church and its influence and witness to the whole world uh, that started actually from the first century and will continue through the grace of God to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, and uh, we will get back to His Grace Bishop Basil uh, in, a, in a little while, but uh, I wanted to read for uh, our viewers uh, a letter from the Coptic Orthodox bishops of the United States, thanking his uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Donald J. Trump, President of the United States, for his kind uh, declaration, uh, his presidential message. Uh, we, the undersigned Coptic Orthodox bishops of the United States of America, would like to express our sincere and heartfelt appreciation to the President of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump, for his joyful presidential message in celebration of the inaugural Global Coptic Day on June 1, 2019. Coptic Orthodox Christians, not only in America, but all over the world, are elated by your steadfast words of encouragement. We are truly grateful. We would also like to thank the First Lady Melania Trump for her warm wishes in celebrating Global Coptic Day. 
we pray the Almighty Lord Jesus Christ give you the strength, wisdom, and fortitude to lead this great nation to, con to continued prosperity. Amen. Uh, signature of 11 bishops. And that brings actually us to uh, uh, watch uh, His Eminence Metropolitan Serabion and His Grace Bishop Abraham and His Grace Bishop Kirillus in videos number five, six, and seven to tell us how do they feel about Global Coptic Day and uh, their prayers and encouragement for in their diocese, uh, Los Angeles, diocese of Los Angeles, uh, for the priests and the congregation to participate. Let us watch. I want to express my joy and support for the idea of the Global Coptic Day. It is a great idea to bring uh, the Copts through the world together at a certain day, which is the 1st of June, the, in, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ to Egypt. And also it is a chance to let the society where we live, either in America or in Europe, whatever, to know about uh, this uh, important day and also to get a recognition for the Copts in the society and uh, it will also bring uh, people from different places together, especially when it covers certain ideas like to have activities, to have service to, to the community. May the Lord bless this idea to be for the glory of his name and to the benefit of his people. In the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, I'm so happy to announce uh, this Global Coptic Day uh, to celebrate globally all over the world, especially here in North America, uh, in the commemoration and the celebration of uh, entry of our Lord Jesus Christ into the land of Egypt. Uh, yes, we do believe here. Uh, we do uh, live here in America, uh, but still uh, remembering uh, this blessed day which mentioned in the Bible that our Lord uh, Jesus came to Egypt and blessed uh, every place in Egypt, which becomes later on a monastery or a church or a blessed day. Uh, everyone uh, goes and take a blessing uh, of these holy places in Egypt. Uh, we thank everyone. Uh, behind this idea uh, came up um, um, especially those people are working so hard uh, to make this uh, day possible uh, and to celebrate and to remember uh, this uh, blessed uh, uh, memory and celebration uh, of entry of our Lord Jesus into Egypt. Uh, we encourage everyone uh, in his uh, work, in his school, uh, in his neighborhood to just tell everyone about this day. By this way, we can spread word uh, around uh, the society and community we live in uh, that we are uh, celebrating this uh, blessed uh, uh, feast uh, in our church and uh, everywhere globally. Thank you so much. I would like to uh, voice our uh, excitement about the Global Coptic Day and the work which uh, the Coptic Orthodox Church is now in a new phase, a new era, that ever since the work of the, uh, and the sacrifice of the martyrs, that uh, their blood really was a testimony and a witness to the joy and the power and the strength of the faith uh, of uh, Orthodoxy, uh, which is the manifestation, I would say, of St. Mark, the evangelist in the 21st century. And we hope and we pray and we praise and we labor uh, so that everyone will know about our Lord Jesus Christ, but also about the great testimony and the work uh, that the saints have been doing from generation to generation. And we, we hope that this will be a new beginning for us so that we can uh, continue in the work uh, and the struggle and enter into the same witness 
and the testimony that our forefathers had. Great, great, great messages and uh, our hope that between now and next year, 1st of June, we every day we do something for the Global Coptic Day. Uh, go to Facebook, uh, Global Coptic Day on Facebook, uh, go to YouTube and, and search for Global Coptic Day, go to Google and search for Global Coptic Day. Execute the one of the objectives is to share Coptic heritage with the world, uh, let alone with our own children, our neighbors, our friends, our relatives. Uh, we talked about the relationship between Coptic identity and Coptic civilization, Coptic spirituality, in which the Global Coptic Day is a strong enabler strong power to promote that Coptic identity, but also Coptic spirituality, Coptic civilization, for the bonding of humanity. All humanity, all religions, all philosophies, all uh, political views can share their common humanity promoted by the Global Coptic Day. Uh, I wanted to uh, alert the viewer that of this book, uh, Be Thou There, we know that the angel uh, in the uh, Gospel of Matthew, the angel appeared to Joseph, the carpenter, in a dream and told him, go to Egypt, take the child and his mother, and go to Egypt and be thou there. You see, be thou there, the title of the book. And this is Gabal al-Tir in Al-Minya, Abu Ur'as, uh, where uh, the priest, there is uh, the water of the Nile here, but the, the church is on a cliff, uh, very high on the cliff. And so there is this uh, way up the cliff, and where the Holy Family is, stayed in Egypt in one of the uh, stops that they made. Uh, the book about Be Thou There, edited by Dr. Gaudat Gabra, you can search for it on Amazon.com or anywhere else. Also, the churches of Egypt, from the journey of the Holy Family to the present day. This book, also on Amazon.com, it has been printed several times, and uh, it traces the Holy Family in Egypt and what artifacts, what museums, what churches, what monasteries were built along the road and along with other monuments that are not along the road. So it's, it's a very important book. And fortunately, the book is also translated to Arabic, Kana'is uh, Masr, and it is published by the American University of Cairo Press. In, and uh, that's an, another book about the Holy Family in Egypt. Uh, I want to say something. Are you with me, Mr. Anis? Yes, absolutely. I have a good surprise for you. You do? Yes. And please, if you can, transmit this to the White House. Very pleasant surprise. You know the name Melania, our honorable first lady. The name has a strong relationship with Egypt. Is this a surprise for you or you knew it? Uh, I have to admit it's a surprise. Okay. Go to Wikipedia and look for Melania the Elder. Melania was a rich widow in Rome, fourth century after Constantine, and she became a widow, and she's rich. So she started helping the poor, opening homes for the poor, for the virgins, to nuns to worship, and then she felt a strong need that to make good monastic life, she has to go and live in a convent in Egypt, fourth century. 
So she went to Egypt, spent six months in convents, learning and being a disciple to Egyptian nuns, Coptic nuns, learning the rules of monasticism. That's Melania the Elder. After that, she went to near Jerusalem and established a convent and lived there and accepted novices, nuns. And then, to make a long story short, she had children because she was a widow and one of her children begat Melania the Younger. So Melania the Younger took the role model of her grandmother and she became a nun. And she came to Egypt and lived in Egypt. So we ha and both personalities are on uh, Wikipedia. Not only that, but two years ago, there was a book published by uh, editor is Professor Car Caroline Schroeder from University of the Pacific in California. She edited a book about Melania. Uh, the elder and the younger, and in which each professor or scholar wrote a chapter in the book. Uh, you can go to Amazon.com and find the book Melania, in which you, what I told you now is expanded, the to total story and the how their legacy survived the centuries and so on. So there is some connection of Melania name with the Coptic Church. Nice surprise. That is, yeah, that's a surprise. Uh, I think, I think they'd love to hear that, actually. Yes, buy them the book and send it as a gift. Yeah, that's very nice. That's, uh, yeah, that's a nice thing. That would be a nice thing to do, for sure. Excellent. What's your take so far? And before we go to uh, His Grace Bishop Basil to tell us about ways and means of celebrating the day as an individual, as a family, as a local church, as a diocese, as Coptic world, before we go there? Well, <clears throat> it's really an opportunity. You know, Global Coptic Day, we had objectives and we had ways of celebrating and acknowledging the day, and we used the acronym PRAISE. Uh, but I wanted to just say that, and, and very quickly, praise includes prayer uh, and read, uh, starting a reading tradition with the children and inviting non-cops to, to services or to a church and, and a few other things. My point is that these are actually things we should all be doing anyway, as some of the fathers have said. They said this is a great initiative to remind us on Global Coptic Day that we, we are supposed to do these things. But the fact is, we should be living our spiritual life and a, a, spirit, a, and a life of service every day of our lives. Now, if Global Coptic Day serves to remind us of that, that's a, a, a blessed and wonderful thing. And hopefully, uh, every year we can, if we're not doing everything in the, in the acronym praise, we can increase our services or increase the activities, the spiritual activities that we do every year. Uh, or maybe vary it. Uh, if I haven't invited someone this year, maybe next year I'll invite someone. But these are all things that we can do and, and build on, God willing, in the upcoming years. Great. Uh, I, I want to mention that two churches we interviewed on, on this program in the past who celebrate the feast of the entry of our Lord to Egypt and open the doors of the church to the community and they have very successful program. One of them is the Coptic Church in Winnipeg, uh, Canada. Uh, we presented that program before. Uh, if you go to uh, YouTube and search for Coptic Civilization, Winnipeg, Canada, actually the episode is entitled Coptic Civilization in Winnipeg. Uh, uh, and 
but most of the episode is about the feast of the entry of Christ to Egypt. And the second uh, episode that we presented about churches doing that is uh, your local church, perhaps, uh, Mr. Anis, Father Timothy Suleiman, we interviewed him in the program, and he spoke about your annual festival for the many years in the, in the past continuing. So, uh, so, so I, I, I'm sure many churches around the world, especially in the diaspora, when they open the doors of the church and have a program in which uh, members of the congregation or invited speakers can talk to uh, the non-copts and have a meal together, have a fellowship together, and maybe listen to some Coptic hymnology and so on. So uh, let us watch video number two in which His Grace Bishop Basil, the Auxiliary Bishop of the Diocese of Southern United States, uh, speak about praise, P-R-A-I-S-E, as Mr. Anis explained, it, it, each letter is, is, represents certain action uh, about ways and means of living the global Coptic day, benefiting from it, uh, promoting it, riding the wave of an energy that comes from celebrating uh, that day. Be summarized in the word praise, P-R-A-I-S-E. And the first is that as Christians, we are called to pray on behalf of the entire world. We're called to pray on behalf of one another as Christians and on behalf of the entire, entire world because we are supposed to be salt and light in the midst of the earth. Um, and when we're praying, um, we're praying of course for uh, all the Christians, for the mother church in Egypt, for all the churches all throughout the world, and for the peace and harmony of the world that we may be united uh, in the praise and worship of God as God desires. Um, and that is P. R stands for reading that we take this opportunity to develop a tradition of reading with our children, that we read from the scriptures, reading the story of our Lord and the Holy Family entering into Egypt and fleeing from Herod that we find in the Gospel of St. Matthew. And to understand the, the salvation that, as Sayyidina said, was brought into the entire world by our Lord Jesus Christ in his incarnation and in his fleeing to Egypt. Uh, starting a tradition of reading um, with our children and with one another as adults uh, in reading the scriptures as families, as congregations, as communities together. That's P and that's R. The A stands for acts of mercy, that we take this opportunity to do acts of mercy in the midst of our communities uh, in serving the sick and the poor and the prisoned and all those who are in need. Of course, we as Christians are called to do all of these things on a daily basis. However, we take this opportunity to focus our attention on the salvation that God has granted to the entire world and do acts of mercy specifically on this day as well. The I stands for invite, that we take this opportunity to invite others to know our faith, to know the, the heritage of the Coptic Orthodox Church, to come and see as our Lord Jesus Christ said to many of the disciples. And to understand the, the, the rich heritage that they also may know the Lord um, and worship Him. And in this case, we can do tours in our churches and take the opportunity to show them the beauty of our churches and how we pray and how we worship and how we've kept this from the early church until now. P-R-A-I-S. The S is to serve one another. To serve one another in our communities, um, as a church and also to serve within our local communities to be a light as we said in the midst of the world seeing what the needs of our local community is because we are called at, at all times to preach the gospel first and foremost by our actions to go and see what our local community is in need of and to serve there and E finally is to educate to educate our community about the rich heritage of the Coptic Church speaking to them and, and telling them and creating different means by which we can let them know how the Coptic Orthodox Church contributed to the entire world, to all of Christendom, and to the entire world in general. And so we see that from the beginning, the Coptic Orthodox Church is evangelistic. After the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, St. Mark, the writer of the second gospel, he came to Egypt and he preached Christianity. And everyone knows that the gospels 
uh, are, are the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Mark being the second writer there, this is key to all Christians that straight from the Gospel we have our evangelist in Egypt. To let people know about this, the beauty of this church that was established and still holds the faith until now. And in the midst of this, Saint Mark was also the first martyr in Egypt. He died for the faith and his blood was shed. But it was not only him, but we have martyrs until now, constantly shedding their blood. From the beginning of the church, there was always martyrdom and the Coptic Orthodox Church is known as the Church of the Martyrs. That's why we have the blood of, uh, of the martyrs. The red blood is symbolized in the, the, the carpets of our churches. That when we see the red, it's reminded that the, our faith was kept and preserved by the witness of these martyrs. And we have martyrs until today. We know recently about the 21 martyrs from the Coptic Orthodox Church that were martyred in Libya due to terrorism. And while it is a sad reality that there is terrorism in the world, we know that God preserves the church through the faith of such people. And after the period of time of martyrdom in the early church that the, the Coptic Orthodox Church offered for the faith of the world, we saw the time of monasticism. And Saint Anthony the Great was the father of monasticism. He taught us how to live Christian monasticism. And the life story of Saint Anthony written by Saint Athanasius the Apostolic, it was spread throughout the entire world and this actually is what brought Christian monasticism to the rest of the world. That Saint Anthony the Great, a simple Coptic peasant raised in Egypt, he himself uh, was the father of monasticism and all monks throughout the world will call him their father. After this period of martyrdom, there was also many debates in the early church concerning heresies that had happened and tried to infiltrate the church. And the Coptic Orthodox Church is very proud to call two of its patriarchs and many other patriarchs pillars of the faith. Those two being Saint Athanasius the Apostolic and Saint Cyril of Alexandria, the 20th and 24th patriarchs of the Coptic Church. All Christians are indebted to Saint Athanasius and Saint Cyril and we go back to them to learn the church the faith of the early church and we know that Saint Athanasius was very instrumental in the first ecumenical council at Nicaea in forming the creed that all apostolic Christians they say it in all their liturgical services and so we are proud of these uh, pillars that have been throughout our church from the very beginning and continue to be present now in our holy church uh, we thank God for this contribution and we want others to be educated upon it so we take this day and this opportunity to educate them and to teach them about the wealth of the Coptic Orthodox Beautiful, beautiful explanation of the ways and means to celebrate Global Coptic Day uh, and, and think this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it the Copts had many, many days of grief, many centuries of grief. The good days were fewer than, much fewer than the bad days in worldly categories, in worldly terms. True, our eyes is fixed on the crucified Lord, who is the pleasure of salvation of the world made him bear the pain and suffering of the cross that he was rejoicing while being in, 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 in enormous suffering but God also invited us to joy the fruits of the spirit nine fruits start with love joy and peace so we seek joy and we seek peace presenting all of that in love even to those who persecute us because we are Christians we pray for for them and so the global Coptic day is also a day for prayer for Christian fellowship among all Christians worldwide all the Gentiles who received the Christ when he visited in Egypt. Actually, Egypt was a cosmopolitan place at that time, where there were Greeks and Romans and Egyptians and, and Nubians, 
Jews, Egypt was uh, one of the most cosmopolitan uh, places uh, at that time of, uh, in history. Mr. Anis, I see in your actions and in the bishop's messages that we les listen to and, he, uh, and President Trump a global view a global view of the Coptic existence and Coptic influence and Coptic, uh, as, as Christ told us, you are the light of the world, you are the salt of the earth. So definitely you were thinking globally. Please elaborate on this point, if I may ask you. Well, we're thinking, yeah, we're thinking globally because limiting it to locally or regionally or even nationally would not do it justice. We're thinking globally because we want to reach the whole world because we have great news. We have a treasure. We have something that impacts the whole world. And so the, the vision, and like I said, when His Grace Bishop Yusuf wanted it to be called global, it was with that, um, with that type of understanding that this is for the entire world to realize that they are blessed by God. They are his people. And, and we wanted to get that message out. Uh, and so, and when we speak globally, you know, we haven't discussed this, but one of the ways that we were sort of uh, getting the boots on the ground, mobilizing people, was through ambassadors and ambassadorships. And so we asked for volunteers in, in all our, our Coptic dioceses, and many of them were international. And so we asked them to help promote Global Coptic Day to the congregation, to help shoot videos, take photos, remind people to wear red on Global Coptic Day. And by, by the way, that's symbolic of the blood of the saints. And we had ambassadors in all types of countries, Germany and Australia and Italy, um, uh, Kuwait, all, all everywhere, and of course the U.S. and Canada. And so, and it, it really caught on because this is a day, I think, as cops, that we really were hoping would happen somehow, some way, sometime. And like I said, by the grace of God, God wanted this. It was not the action of any one person or any you know group of people. This is this was God's plan. He wanted this to happen. And like I I showed you and and told you how things were just so easy and and God's hand was so apparent from the very first second until now. And so we are we are thrilled that it's global because we want everyone to know about it. Uh, this is uh, uh, it's really that what you just said makes us meaning us meaning Logos TV is including my program Coptic Civilization uh, natural uh, synergy with your project Global Coptic Day uh, both of us. Uh, interested in the media, usage of the media, uh, uh, as means, but also as an objective in the following sense. Uh, you probably said it, or I heard it during the program, that if we don't fill the media with good material, Satan will fill the media, he's already filling it with bad material. So our absence will just make victory natural for evil. So one of the benefits of Global Coptic Day, as it is one of the benefits of Logos TV, and also those who uh, preach the gospel on Facebook and YouTube, etc., is to transmit and broadcast the good news to the whole world using this vehicle of electronic media. 
So I, I look forward to collaboration uh, between us here and Logos TV and your program, Global Coptics Day. And uh, we, we, we started that today and in Dr. Mahfouz Grace program, Al Masihi Wal Muktama, last week. And uh, I wanted to uh, present the prayer of His Grace Bishop Basil at the, uh, as we heard uh, His Grace Bishop Yusuf asking him to do so. So we'll have that prayer now, but before then I want to make that comment that we have been blessed by the second generation who are now bishops, priests, laity like yourself, Mr. Anis, and, uh, and, and men and women who are serving uh, a great service or presenting great service to the church everywhere. I mean, from the person who volunteered to do Urban for the liturgy every Sunday for 10, 15, 20 years, the people I admire, people who make the Urban, people who clean the church, people who organize seats, people who uh, present in Logos TV and the media and yourself in the Global Coptic Day. So I would like to uh, recognize and, and appreciate and acknowledge the tremendous energy and enthusiasm in which people persist for years in, in certain kind of service according to the gifts given to them uh, by Christ. As in the Epistle of Ephesians it says, uh, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that were planned for us before our creation. Or we are planned, meaning we, were, we are invited. We had the option of saying no or yes or doing it in a good way or in a bad way. Oh, these are all options, but we, but, but we are his workmanship. And Global Coptic Day is uh, evidently uh, a program for peace, a program for fellowship, a program for prayer, a program for doing good, for acts of mercy, a program for uh, achieving the purpose of Christ when he told his apostles, go to the entire world and preach the gospel. So let us uh, uh, not watch this time. Let us pray with video number uh, four. Uh, so I, if we may uh, bow our heads and pray with his grace, Bishop Basil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. We thank you, O Lord, for this opportunity to praise you and to glorify you on the feast of your entry into Egypt. We ask you, O Lord, to bless this celebration of the Global Coptic Day, that your people may be a light in the midst of the world, that they may realize the rich heritage that you've given to us, O Lord, and that we are called to trade with, that we may win many people, many souls, for your kingdom. We ask you, O Lord, to bless this endeavor, to bless all those who have labored in it. We ask you, O Lord, to grant us to always be thankful for the gifts and the graces you've granted us in this life. Bless, O Lord, this endeavor, and grant us, O Lord, to always be faithful until our last breath with the faith that you've given to us. And continue, O Lord, to have this event be a light to your people every year. And teach us, O Lord, through it, to live our Christian heritage the intercessions of St. Mary, your pure mother, and the blessings of the entry of our Lord Jesus Christ into Egypt, the blessings of St. Mark the Apostle and Martyr, and the blessings of His Holiness Pope Tawadros II, and His Grace Bishop Yusuf, and His Grace Bishop Gregory, we ask you, O Lord, to bless this endeavor, and glory be to Him forever. Amen. We wish you all. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord and uh, who, who has been gracious and merciful and generous with us. Uh, your thoughts, uh, Mr. Anis. I, to be honest with you, I did not, in, in putting this together, 
I had a certain vision and expectation for how it would be. Uh, and I was excited about the potential. But the truth is, it was many, many times better and greater and, and bigger than I ever thought it would be. And this is not due to my work. This is due to, um, first of all, it being God's hand, being in the project from the very first moment, like I've said several times. Uh, the blessing of His Holiness Pope Tawadros, because of course, without His Holiness's blessing, we would not have continued. Uh, the incredible leadership and blessing and prayers and vision uh, and depth and patience of, of His Grace Bishop Yusuf, who is just his advice and his counsel and, and all his uh, perception on this really made this into what it is. Of course, there were the ambassadors who uh, I must thank who were active and involved. Uh, the bishops, I should have said previous to that, but the bishops of the Holy Synod who listened patiently to the idea of Global Coptic Day. Uh, I have to thank His Grace Bishop Peter for telling me to wait for him in the Logos atrium, and this allowed me to speak to His Holiness Pope Tawadros. Uh, those who labored in the marketing and the graphic design, and I, I have to thank um, Monica Skandar with uh, Faith and Hand, who made some um, wonderful graphic designs that we used and shared and, and got thousands of, of likes. And really, every person who was involved and enthusiastic and excited and took videos and took photos and wore red and had balloons and released red balloons and who created events, who reached out. I mean, this truly was a global effort and it was a huge group effort. Uh, and so there are so many people to thank. I hope I didn't leave anyone out. Uh, and all the encouragement of the fathers, the priests, uh, this is something, God willing, that we can build on, and next year would be bigger, and the year after, and the year after, and uh, just hoping that people won't forget about it throughout the year, and I'll make sure they don't. I'll be sending emails and posts, uh, and please, if you have not subscribed to our newsletter, uh, you can find it, and it's uh, we send e emails every now and then to update you. It's at globalcopticday.org and just put in your name and email address and you'll be on the list and follow us at Global Coptic Day uh, on all social media. And I look forward to having a conversation next year, God willing, and we'll have even more to talk about. And I have to thank you, Dr. South, for the incredible preparation you did for the program, for your enthusiasm, for your encouragement, and frankly, for your leadership and showing how to sustain uh, enthusiasm and energy in a cause that you truly believe in, uh, I am indebted to you and I really appreciate everything you've done. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot thank you enough for this wonderful episode in which uh, we, we, we talked about a great project a great creation uh, that God willed. And uh, as St. Paul said uh, about himself, that he planted and Apollo watered, but God gave the increase. So we are uh, in God's hands like uh, pencils w that he would write like Saint, uh, Mother Teresa uh, mentioned, uh, we are just pencils in his hands. And he uh, would write using that pencil uh, miracles. It's not the pencil, but the creator of the pencil who gives power to what is written. So praise the Lord. We are, I'm grateful. 
and we cannot thank God enough for his mercy and grace and using us humans, sinners, worst sinners like myself, uh, to his glory uh, and for the benefit of ourselves and our salvation <coughs> and salvation of the world according to his mercy and the grace. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nader Anis. Thank you. It is my pleasure, and I look forward to speaking with you again soon. God will. We, we look forward. Uh, we hope uh, we would be grateful if you accept uh, standing invitation to be on our program. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure and my blessing. God bless you. Thank you. Our viewers, thank you for watching Logos TV program today entitled Global Coptic Day. I hope you uh, go to Facebook and uh, you may listen to the or watch the entire episode again on Facebook on Logos Space TV uh, on Facebook. Uh, press like on the uh, page there and you will be notified of such beautiful programs. Uh, uh, other pro uh, the entire spectrum of programs presented to you on Logos TV. Uh, this program uh, will go to YouTube tomorrow. Uh, go there and search for Coptic Civilization. Uh, also, uh, it will be repeated uh, on Wednesdays as usual, uh, 2 a.m. and 12 noon, LA time. And most of the time, uh, if possible, it is uh, repeated on Sunday at 12 noon. LA time. God bless you. Uh, I thank the crew of Logos TV, uh, the control room, the sound engineer, the camera engineer, the editors, the uh, director, and all the names that you see on the screen uh, when we conclude. May God bless you and thank you for inviting us to your family to watch us. See you next episode of Coptic Civilization. I'm Michael Saad. Yeah,